Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I walk you through the React challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. Okay, that last video was a doozy. It was over 20 minutes, and I like to try to keep my videos as short as possible. Um, so let's wrap up this uh, app component, and uh, and then we can jump into some of the other components as well. All right, so. Um, Pretty much got everything set up. We're um, initializing some component state right here. Uh, these are some helper methods that will um, go out and make our um, AJAX request to the uh, Free Code Camp API endpoints. And then right here, uh, this is a lifecycle method. It runs only one time before the initial render. Um, of our component, and uh, that's a great place to, to make our request. And I'm just using this um, all and spread methods from Axios to uh, make concurrent requests, to make two requests at the same time. And, uh, and once I get the response from, from them, I'm just updating my recent campers and all-time campers um, with, the, with the JSON data that I got from, um, that I got from the API endpoint. Okay, so uh, we're almost done. Uh, we've got here. If we go to our um, to our page, we got um, displaying campers and uh, two bootstrap buttons. Uh, I'm just going to change this a little bit. I'm going to say viewing top, viewing top, and uh, I'm going to use um, uh, actually. Let's see here. I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to open up some curly braces. I'm going to put in. Um, um, these kind of not not single quotes, but they're like these little back ticks, and we're going to use some um, uh, some template strings. And so I'm basically just going to write uh, viewing top, and then I'm going to do dollar sign and then curly braces, and I'm going to write this dot state dot current view. Okay, and if I go ahead and save that um, and refresh, then cool, I get viewing top and then recent campers. So anytime you want to put like a JavaScript uh, expression or variable inside of your JSX, that's possible. You just have to put it inside of curly braces. And then with the back ticks, that's going to be a template string. So um, uh, it'll display the text viewing top. And then this right here, th this is referring to, um, I mean, pretty much like a variable. It's coming from our state object. and um, and you know the the initial value of the current view property is you know recent campers. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's add some click events um, on here so that it will update um, our um, yeah, our you know view um, the uh, not the view but the um, header up here. So uh, we're going to pass this um, this um, property to it. It's called on click. Okay. So on click and give it some space right there. And inside of that is going to be uh, some curly braces because we are um, because we are going to put in uh, like a JavaScript um, you know, expression in here. And we're going to use a fat arrow function. So it's going to look kind of weird, but just follow along. So a pair of parentheses, fat arrow, and then uh, we're going to call our set state. So this Dots. Uh, oh, sorry. We just back up here. You can't call this dot set state inside of your render function. Uh, we're going to have to create a new uh, a new helper method. So we haven't created it yet, but let's just you know write the code out and then we'll do it. So uh, this dot on click, and we're going to say uh, this dot change view. And then we're going to give it an argument, just one argument, and we will call this uh, recent campers. Okay. And um, okay, and then we're going to do the same thing down here on click. Okay, and give this some space. Curly braces. We're going to do a fat arrow function, and this dot change view, and we will write all time campers. Okay, absolutely great, good. Let's uh, write this helper function because it does not exist. Um, all right, so we're gonna write change view. It's gonna take a view argument and this dot set state, uh, right, and we're gonna give it 
Uh, and we're going to say current view, and it's going to be equal to to this the view. Okay. And actually, if we wanted to use that ES6 syntax, we can uh, pass this in. Then bam! Now our property and our value, uh, they're the same thing, so we can just write it just like that. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and save this. Okay, we will refresh. Okay, and we can look at that. We can uh, click the buttons, and that will be wonderful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, we can't, unfortunately, call set state inside of our render function. I believe that will, um, you know, give us an error if we try uh, doing that. So uh, let me just show you what might happen if we did that. So I'm just going to try it out, and I think it's going to fail. I know it's going to fail. Okay. And if we try it, let's, let's just try it out. We'll say um, current view equals all time campers. Okay. And I don't expect this to work, but you know, we're just going to try it because we're coders and we're adventurous. All right. And if we try refreshing it, okay. Oh, wait. Huh. That does work, actually. Okay. Uh, all right. Never mind. Uh, wait. Did I save this? Yeah, I saved it. And did I refresh it? Huh, okay, that's interesting. All right, never mind, forget what I said. <laughs> uh, I, I was under the false assumption that you could not call this dot set state inside of your render method, but but clearly you can and, and everything else I mean seems to be you know working you know real nicely. So okay, never mind. Um you know I'm I'm stupid <laughs> and uh yeah that works totally okay. All right, um anyway, um you know, earlier I said you, you couldn't do it, but, but apparently you can. Um, and, you know, I just, you know, took it out and I put it in this helper method. Um, you know, I think that would still be like my preferred way of doing it. It's just, you know, putting it in a helper method and, um, and you know, instead of calling this dot set state directly in there, I suppose you could, um, and, and it works. Um, I was under the false assumption that it doesn't work, but uh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know why I was thinking that. Anyway, uh, functionally the same thing. Uh, I just uh, prefer to do it this way. All right, so save it, and we'll go back, and we will do this again. Okay, and it looks like everything is working. Okay guys, this is the same video. This isn't a new video. Uh, I'm wearing a different sweater and I'm adding on to this video because I realized uh, after recording that I left out a couple of important details. So we're still working on the app component. We're almost done. We're just uh, got to focus on a couple of little things but in order to make it work. And, um, and these mistakes, they're not so egregious. Um, it, it's, it's really easy to make these mistakes and this is an opportunity for learning. Okay, so first of all, uh, I wanted to, um, I wanted to uh, just change something to my component will mount. Um, lifecycle method. Uh, we have our Axios call and basically what it's doing, it's uh, going to make both requests at the same time. So this is concurrent request and um, we have our fetch recent campers and fetch all time campers and we're using Axios to make a git request to both of these API endpoints and we can use all to do it at the same time. And when we have gotten a response from both API endpoints, then it will be available to us in an anonymous function. And uh, in these arguments here that I've given it, well, uh, that's what uh, the, that's what the response is from each one. So recent campers, this would be the response from this dot fetch recent campers, and uh, as well as all time campers, the response from fetch all time campers. Now. Uh, first thing we got to do, um, and, and this is a, this is kind of like a feature of ES6 right here. Uh, my uh, my spread method from Axios it takes an anonymous function uh, as an argument, um, but 
this right here is not going to work, okay? Uh, I have the uh, ES5 anonymous function syntax. And uh, I'm gonna go to my browser, and yeah, it looks like my, uh, Looks like my buttons are working, uh, you know, as it should be. But I'm going to open up my console, and I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, and I get this nasty error. It says uncaught in promise type error cannot read property set state of null. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go too deep in into the reasons why we're getting into this uh, this error message, but I'm just gonna show you how to fix it. Uh, we need to make this into an ES6 fat arrow function, and it's really simple to do. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of the function keyword, and we have our arguments, so that's fine. And then after our list of arguments, we're just gonna put in a fat arrow, and then boom, it works, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and Save that, and then I'm gonna run it again. Cool, and you see that we don't get the error anymore. Now, uh, one other thing that I want to do is uh, change what's happening here in this dot set state. Um, but first, let's actually see what a response looks like uh, right here um, from our Axios. So I'm just gonna console log just one of them and I'll just console log recent campers. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Go back to my browser, reload. Okay, cool, and this is our response and it's an object, okay? And this object, it has a couple of properties. It has a config property, headers, requests. It gives us a status, so 200, that means okay. But the one property that we really care about uh, is this data property. So the data property is an array, and it has 100 items in that array. And if we just look through all of those items in that data array, um, they're objects. And if we open up one, okay, this is, um, this is what we're getting from the API endpoint from FreeCodeCamp. So this user, uh, S. James, 1958 GM, uh, he has you know, 515 recent points. Uh, nearly 4,000 overall points. Uh, that's his, uh, a link to his uh, profile picture, and uh, that was uh, the last time it was updated. So this guy, we're really active on a uh, free code camp. Uh, but the point is, uh, we cannot set the state using this right here. And, and I showed this to you, um, you know, earlier in this video. Okay, um, oops, that looks better. So this, is actually shorthand for that because the key and value are the same things. Oops, I'm going to say all time campers. All right, so this recent campers, it comes from our uh, component state and so does all time campers. And I'm just setting it equal to the value of our uh, anonymous uh, function right here. But as you see from the response in our console, um, this is referring to that whole object. And well, I don't care about that other stuff. So I just want to, um, uh, I just want to add in data right here. And that should make everything work. And I'm just going to get rid of my console.log. Uh, but what I will do is I will uh, just console log this dot state. Okay, console.log. Um, actually, let's put it inside. Okay. All right, and I'm going to reload it again. Okay, great. So this is our component state, and you can see that we have all time campers. It's an array with 100 items, and we can collapse that and look, each item here is an object, so that's wonderful. And our current view is still recent campers, great. And then recent campers, also an array with 100 items. So uh, that works wonderful. Okay, so we are finished with the app level component, and I'm going to take out this console log because we don't really need it. Um, and
before we go on, uh, you know, I just wanted to remind you when you're using Axios, the response that you're going to get is going to be contained in the data property of that response object. Uh, so that's what you should always look for. And um, well, in order to make this dot set state work um, inside of uh, inside of this. Uh, you know, function right here. Well, we, we got to use the fat arrow function. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to talk about why we needed to use the fat arrow function in this situation. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're already familiar with EF6 and the fat arrow function, you can go ahead and skip the next video. If you, you know, have no clue um, and you want to learn more and take a pause, then, yeah, by all means, uh, you know, go to the next video, watch it. Otherwise, just skip over it and, um, and we'll proceed with the next component. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye. Boop.